Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Node.js and f without a framework. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how bad is it if a person doesn't know how to work in Node.js with a, without a framework such as Express? Could this person get an entry level job as a backend developer? And the short answer is, Yes, you can. And let me explain why. So Node.js, although it is in many ways a much more powerful tool than a web solution exclusively, because the, that's something that is very important to understand that Node is just a way for you. It's a runtime that allows you to execute JavaScript. So there's people who are using Node for much more than the standard REST API or Express applications or Happy or the other, uh, other like there's so many different frameworks, right? So, so even as just a CLI or a way for you to execute JavaScript code on a server or something like that, it's a useful tool. It's very common in different work practices or, or different workflows, such as with Webpack and other bundling solutions, right? But the thing is, when it comes to web, Node doesn't actually have a culture around building things without any framework. Because Node is, like, I mean, there is support. There is support for setting up a web server in Node. But a lot of the luxuries, such as more sophisticated routing solutions and things of this nature, it's not really in the standard libraries. And we, that's, that's OK. It's just that when that's not in, although you can build a web server without a framework, it's just going to be, for most people, standard practice to use a framework. Now, if you were in PHP, for example, that's a different story because PHP does actually have a culture around building applications or web applications without a framework. Now, I'm not saying that you should, if you're doing PHP, that that's the rule. It's just that there is a culture around it. And that's a big part of what's okay and what's not okay in the programming language. An example would be that if you come into the Ruby community, you may not be expected to know all the things about object-oriented programming. But if you're in the Java community, that is very expected of you. You should know that because that's like a foundation thing within that community. And the same thing is true for Node. In Node, there are certain things that you should really know and there are things that nobody really cares about whether or not you know. And this is true for pretty much every community, guys. So the norm is that you, you know Express when you're dealing with Node.js. It is the most popular of the web frameworks, hands down. There are more things on the market, but that is where most people will feel comfortable in saying that, yeah, this person, this developer knows how to use Node.js if you know Express, because it is pretty much the, it is the default choice for many, many, many companies and many developers. Now, the other part of this question where you say, can I get a backend job if I only know Express? Well, I will say that that very much depends on if you're asking if you're going to get a job doing this with Node.js. Now, if you're aiming to be a backend developer in Node exclusively, I want to say this immediately, that might actually be a little bit trickier than you think. Like Node is very widely adopted in many cases, but the backend exclusive or like the backend focused Node development is not as adopted as say in Java and C Sharp and these bigger languages. Node is present in pretty much every single project that has a web presence because of what I was saying. It's being used for more than just web servers. And that is one of the things that is very important to know. So Node is useful to know from almost every developer who has any correlation to front-end development or anything like that. And quite often you see smaller services built in Node or things like that. It very much depends on the company and the culture in that company. But one thing that is worth knowing about becoming a very proficient backend developer in JavaScript or in Node is that these skills don't correlate, they don't transfer as well into other more standard or more corporate level backend languages such as Java and C Sharp. The reason for that is once again culture. 
And this is something that I'm trying desperately to help people understand when they're working with Node and trying to, through my own code examples, my own videos, to, to show that the, there is a difference, a, very, a fairly substantial difference between how people are building Node applications and servers and so forth at large in the JavaScript community and how the enterprise languages are doing this. And that's not just because of the obvious reasons that, oh, this is a different programming language. It is because the culture around scalable enterprise level development is very, it's almost non-existent in Node or in JavaScript. JavaScript, the JavaScript community has a lot of people who have they, most of us are self-taught and most of us have, and some people, quite a lot of them, have no prior experience with other development platforms such or other languages. And I believe that that is the reason why when you, go, if you show me a really good, like, or you show me a backend developer from the Node community, they, I, I, I have to test that person in a different sense than I have to test someone who has a C-sharp background. Because I'm not, I can't be certain, I mean, of course you can never be certain, but the likelihood of the back end, the node backend developer knowing things such as object or in the programming or knowing how to do a layered architecture in a server and what is a, like what is a DAO, what is a service, what is a, like a, what's the MVC pattern, like what all, all, what are all of these things. These more theoretical and architectural uh, patterns are not as popular or as why it's not a given that a Node.js backend developer is going to know this. What's really powerful, at least from my experience, is when you have someone who's been working in another language, such as Java or C Sharp, that goes over to Node and applies a lot of these practices like domain-driven design and things of this nature onto the Node platform. That's when Node really does it well, I think, because I personally believe that there is, I think that Node, especially if you use TypeScript, can beat pretty much all of the cor corporate languages. I could really, I really do make some amazing, scalable, amazing applications, but the culture around writing good code and scaling things in a sustainable way is just not there. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, you're not expected to know how to set up a web server in Node without a framework such as Express, because pretty much every single company uses Express or some other flavor of a web framework to do backend work with Node. Now, if your goal is to be a very good backend developer, I will suggest to you that you shouldn't start with Node. Now, the reason is not because you can't build really good applications in Node. It's just that the community around JavaScript is not really good at enterprise level development. I'm sorry, but that we're, we are just not. We have so much innovation and so much focus on tooling and like developer workflows and things like this. That, that's the thing that, that's amazing with the JavaScript ecosystem. But when it comes to learning really good practices around things such as object-oriented development and test-driven development and how to do uh, domain-driven design or how to do like just a basic thing like a layered architecture in a monolithic application, things like, things like this, they just are so behind some other languages that have been around for a longer time. And these languages are usually C Sharp and Java. They are in many ways at the top of the enterprise ladder of learning how to write software. And maybe you're not say, you're saying to yourself, oh, I'm not an enterprise developer. And that's fine. Bec and you don't have to go to a big corporate job in order to do enterprise development. And the thing is, enterprise doesn't mean that you are working for a company. It means that at the code level, you have taken the considerations that make the difference between if you have a product that becomes a really messy project going forward, or a product that will scale to a bigger size of company. That is the core in why it's so important to learn enterprise level development. Because 
although there's a lot of problems in the corporate world when it comes to software development, at least a lot of the tried and true practices for how to build really large systems are working because otherwise these companies would not be able to scale to the size that they have scaled. And I promise you, the practices that I'm preaching that usually are associated with C Sharp and Java, these practices can be used in any language. It's just that it's very likely for you to get the best exposure to them in those languages. And you can go to Google or wherever you favor and ask them the same thing because they are still using Java, they're, but they're move and they're using Go these days. I'm just saying guys, learning how to write really good scalable software is an important factor in becoming a really proficient backend developer. Have a great day.